Right then, finally onto this, I think, exciting little side project for the Tureg. So this is the Harrop, Harrop, however you want to pronounce it, Australian spec locking front differential. So this is the magic bit with some crazy electromagnet stuff going on. Bit scary to uh, think that there's wires potentially flying right inside if you don't get it right, but this little tab's meant to stop that spinning, so hopefully know what we're doing. So anyway, rather than ripping my car to bits, I decided I'd be better off, ignore that, that's the box that that came in. Got some bearings for it as well. It comes with some wiring, but we'll look at that later on. I decided to buy a spare front diff, and that means if it all craps its pants, I've got a spare one when I take my holder out, and I can put it back together and away we go. But I'll be confident and see, uh, see how things work. So today's job is going to be ripping this to bits and having a look at, I've got a detailed instructions that are up send, but I want to um, take it to bits and have a look how this compares to an Amarok front diff, just as an aside, nothing to do with a Tureg. Got a customer that wants a locking front diff for an Amarok, interesting to us if we can make it happen, then we will. So I'll rip this to bits, see what it looks like, Paul then reckons at some point he's going to have time to put it back together. Then the next step is going to be to the wiring in the car. We'll plug this into that and go click. Yes, it works. Then the third step is going to be putting the diff into the car and testing it. So I'm hoping we have this done before our open day. When is it? At Parkwood? Testing me now. Sometime June, in June. 13th of June. 13th of June. Sometime in June. Up if that's wrong. It's a Saturday in June. Um, I'm hoping to have it done by then because it's like 20 minutes from my house, so if it all goes wrong, it doesn't matter too much. So, yeah, let's rip this apart and have a look. Obviously, the instructions that come with this seem pretty straightforward. A lot of little finicky bits, but straightforward as far as some of random could be. Obviously, the difference in the Amarok one straight away is the Amarok is welded. So this is going to be a machine job to get that off, the ring gear off. But we'll see anyway, but that's not to do with this video now. That'll probably be the last time we talk about that. Let's get stuck in. I know how to use my wrist, mate. Well practiced with my wrist. Oh, this one's not empty like the other one. I'm picking up where Ryan left off in the last video. I've just had a quick look through to try and remember what stage he got to. Um, and by the looks of it, he didn't mention the problems we had when we um, eventually got his diff stripped and compared it with the Harrop side by side. You'll see there's a difference in height between the Harrop diff and the standard diff. This has caused us a little bit of a problem because obviously that means the crown wheel is going to be at the incorrect height. So we've overcome that by machining this face for the crown wheel. That has left us with a little bit less thread engagement than we'd like, but we've not really got any other option because I don't want to tap that any deeper. Otherwise we'll start breaking through and causing even more problems. So basically I'm just dry fitting everything now after we've had the machining done to make sure this is going to be ready for Ryan to install hopefully next week or so, because we've got Parkwood in about three weeks. 
I have already come across one small problem when this has been machined they've not put a radius on that edge and unfortunately it's catching just there so I'm going to speak to our machine and see if we can get that done now and hopefully get it back to us tomorrow um, and then I've got to either modify these bolts or find some more so they don't bottom out and the ring gears on there and they're in there because so at the moment I think they're about 5 mil too long I also might drill these so we can lock wire them as well just to be extra safe What's this I've got in my hand? Right then What is it? Camera Camera? What What didn't you use? Camera And what you done? Grow a moustache Other than that What you done Harry? Might have to run this out at Tuareg Do you want to show people what you've done? Took that. From that. So that's where it should have been. And usually at this point, there'd be like a time lapse video of bolts being undone and stuff. <laughs> and again, Put on floor about there in that gap that Harry might have forgot. Lost in translation. Dog. Choppy, choppy. Spare ready to go. And there. So the V10 is on the ramp and because I've not been kicking people up the ring piece, they've not been recording. So Rob drilled and tapped the front diff for this breather fit in here, which is good. We'll put a little filter on that. Could run it further up if we want to or into the car. Ruben's just drilling holes in my bulkhead. Got this wiring going through down here. So we just need to route this to the front diff. So there, I've got my switch in there. So we need to get that wire to that switch. We'll have a look underneath what else has been done. Yeah, you can't see much. You would probably not know that this were all fancy. Okay, you see where Rob's tapped it. Anyway, breather's coming out there. The wiring comes out of the original breather hole. Change the subframe bushes because they were not in good condition. Fixed the bodge that we had to do when we were at Nigel's place. Whoa, 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 whoa. Squirting oil out of it. My 10mm socket's been retrieved. So yeah, the other thing that we noticed with this as well, these dry shafts are not actually V10 ones. The V10 one's bigger, we'll put a picture of what they're like. Maybe side by side if we've got them. But that means my car, when I bought it, never had V10 dry shaft, so God knows why. The diff is a code that we can't find any information about, but we've got the right ratio anyway. It drives, should be fine. So we'll get this locker to work, see if we can break some dry shafts tomorrow, basically. We shall see. Right, so there's a massive gap in this video. Danny's f***ed off with me because I didn't film what we were doing last night, which was basically installing the e-locker. We're a little bit of a nightmare. The main reason I didn't film it is because sitting the backlash, the only easy way to do it is by, obviously, more conventional divs have caps on the housing 
and when you fit the cap it's a lot easier to measure the backlash with this housing the whole casing's got to be on before the preload's on the bearings so because we wanted to get this done in time for parkwood we have done a little bit of guesstimating but going forward we've got a few more of these to do i'm going to buy another casing either cut it or machine the majority of it out so we can build the diffs and check the backlash before and after without having to mess about so as it is now this is installed um we'll give you a quick look at it in action we're in drive now so as you can see wheels are spinning because it's an open dip i can pretty much stop this so i can stop that with my hands no problem if we turn the dip on now you'll see that we start spinning There you have it. See how long it takes Ryan to break it up outward. <laughs> so, we're back from Parkwood. The car's had a bit of a clean, but it's dumped some Parkwood muck there again as well. But yeah, really happy we are. The front diff worked. They do have the limitations a few times, especially if you've got a bit of steering lock on, you've got to be really careful what you're doing, because you are just going to basically snap some. If you've got quite a bit of traction and you're trying to turn, then yeah and it does want to push on a little bit in the muddy stuff as well when you're turning but we'll, we'll insert a clip now and it working and it worked absolutely perfectly where we decided to test it was just absolutely bang on i'm glad other people came along to help film it because i was there on myself pretty much we alex stuck behind me as well so i'll put that in night and day in that exact circumstance i weren't going to move at all flick the front diff in and just drove straight out of there so this is going to be times where it makes no difference like I, later on in the day we got stuck and were beached and i got no traction on all four wheels and i still weren't going to get out of that so it has got its limitations and the big sort of thing with the front diffs and it's the same on a diff for any car pretty much if the car doesn't come with it from the factory they're quite expensive so i think fitted on a v10 with all this messing about that we've had to do you're looking at probably two and a half grand plus vat so it's like a three grand upgrade on a v6 it should be a bit cheaper because you shouldn't need all that extra machining yeah a lot of work doing it obviously the front subframes down so any work that requires that at the same time it's a good time to do it so we did the bottom arm bushes and the subframe bushes because they were on the way out in here bottom arm bushes were all right considering the mileage but the subframe bushes were on the way out and that seems to be a common thing um, so I don't think there's going to be tons of people wanting them but the options there, we'll sell the diff on the website so you don't have to pay all the import duties and stuff you know how much you're going to be paying and then the next job is going to be getting one in for the Amarox I think we're going to fit one to the Scrapper Rock project I think, is that the new term for it? I think uh, that's what Everyone I call it, it that. Scrapper Rock, that's what I call Amarat. it Amarat, it had rats in it, yeah Scrapper Rock, Amarat, whatever you want to call it I think we'll have both badges you can have two names for a car, can't you? I've had two names all my life. I've been called Scott and Ryan uh, every opportunity. So quite an expensive upgrade. There'll be that one time when you're in the middle of nowhere and you flick that switch and you just drive out that you're like, it didn't matter how much it cost. I'm glad I had it. Not so much an off-road centre where somebody can just drive around and pull you out, but if you're driving into the middle of the wilderness somewhere, which the UK doesn't have many of them sort of places, we're well aware of that. But yeah, it works. Really happy. How long it lasts? I don't know, that front diff's not made of cast iron like, or some really thick aluminium, so maybe we'll break it, maybe we won't. But if you don't have it on, it's no different to the open diff. When it breaks, we'll overcome that problem. So, yeah, cheers for watching. <laughs>